If you haven't been living under a rock over the past few days, then you know about the recent rise of DeepSeek AI. It basically destroyed the American economy and has caused a lot of havoc in the AI space. However, what makes it really interesting is that it is the first actual super popular um, open source LLM that actually rivals the other LLMs like ChatGPT and Claude. And honestly, an open source competitive LLM was inevitable. It should have been OpenAI to begin with, but Sam Altman and the closed AI team had other plans to steal your data and make a ton of money off of it, but that's beside the point. And with that, I think highlights some big cultural shift amongst developers as well as the non-technical market when it comes to open source. But anyways, this video is not about the DeepSeek or OpenAI drama. This is about something much bigger than that. You see, as someone that works at an open source startup, cal.com, I've noticed a lot and a big difference in how people perceive open source companies, both technical and non-technical people, and that growth over the past few months and years. And so what we'll talk about is, from my perspective, why open source companies have grown so much over the past few years and why it will probably be better and rival private companies. And so the first and biggest reason why I think that a lot of people are shifting more towards open source companies is the fact that people are sick and tired of closed source companies taking advantage of their users, stealing their data, and just hiding a bunch of shit from them. We'll take closed AI as an example, but they literally bamboozled everyone from going from an open source company or to be open source company to a closed source project that is trying to capitalize on your data illegally. And they are doing this and they are allowed to do this and they will continue to do this because they have a ton of money. And what I've noticed over the past, say like one or two years is people not taking that bullshit anymore and building something that is for the people. And we'll get into that in a second, but people are just sick and tired of these companies doing this. Now, the biggest reason is data security, but it also really comes down to charging users for basic software needs. When you think about a SaaS application, you're basically renting out that product. So let's just take the example of Calendly because I work at a scheduling software, Calicom, which rivals Calendly. Calendly, when you're using their product, you're just renting out their product and you're paying a price for that. They charge you whatever the amount is and you're able to use the product. And on the other hand, we have Cal.com, which makes every feature that is meant for users free. And on top of that, like we just talked about, the data risk is just not there in open source companies only because they are completely transparent on exactly what is going on within the company. So again, right, let's just take OpenAI for example, right? they can hide a bunch of stuff from us and not disclose a single thing, not say anything about any rules they're following when it comes to data security. They can talk, but they don't have to actually do it. That's what a lot of these companies do. Well, on the other hand, what you see with open source companies is that they have to abide by these rules because they're completely transparent and they have to be completely transparent. They're basically an aquarium that everyone can see. And I honestly think that a lot of people are just fatigued with paying for software and they can see something like self-hosting or they're using open source software, which is typically free for a lot of users. And they just use it because they're sick and tired of these companies stealing your data. However, you might be saying, open source has been available to users for, I was gonna say hundreds of years, but decades, right? It's been here for a long time. So why now? Why are people right now moving towards open source software more than ever before. And why are we seeing a lot more open source companies? And I think, and this is the second reason, that it's just a lot easier to build really good applications that rival closed source applications due to the rise of frameworks like Next.js and basically a billion other frameworks, as well as AI and LLMs. You see, maybe like five years ago, even like 10 years ago, you couldn't build the apps by yourself like you can today. Like really, right now, I could just go on V0, ChatGPT, Claude, any of the million LLMs out there and spin up a pretty good application that I can release to the web. And so what I think has happened is not only are people having this like closed source fatigue, but they're also seeing that the open source options are just a lot better because there's more out there because a lot more people are able to build open source application. And also the apps are just as good as the closed source options. I'm not gonna toot my own horn here, but the company I work at, cal.com, is honestly better than Calendly. We have better free options, we have better enterprise options, and 
we just rival them just as much as a closed source company would. And we're seeing the same with DeepSeek and just a bunch of open source companies around the world. They're just more of them. They're able to compete. So why not go open source and why not take the open source option? And this actually leads to our third reason. And it is the fact that there's just much better monetization strategies. Now I'm not gonna bore you with this, but I made a video on how open source companies make money. But simply put, the monetization strategies nowadays are just a lot better, thus enticing more VC money and people paying for the product, thus leading to more employees, bigger company, etc. Now, while in the past, the monetization strategy for an open source company would have been no no strategy at all. It just would have been open source that you can just self-host. Nowadays, open source companies are like freely and openly trying to make money and that's completely fine. And they're doing it through a bunch of different ways, such as an open core model. And this is just one of many, but it's basically like charging for premium components on your product. So for example, you can self-host cal.com for free. You don't even have to pay for it. But if you wanna use our premium component library, which just allows you to build scheduling apps and apps with scheduling in it a lot easier, you have to pay for that. One thing I also see a lot of open source companies doing a lot now is having a hosted version. So instead of just having a self-hosted version that you can use for free, they also have a hosted version which competes with the closed source alternatives. So you can only imagine this as like a Gmail open source alternative, which I'm actually building a Gmail open source version. So stay tuned for that. But you can think of it as that where, let's just say you build an open source version of Gmail, you have the self-hosted version for people to use, but then you also have the hosted version that people can use as well. But anyways, I don't wanna bore you. Check out the video if you want. Um, I'll leave it below just if you wanna check it out. So yeah. And so the final reason, and this is more of like a gut feeling more than anything, but it is the fact that open source has become this really big marketing tool for both companies using open source as well as open source companies. Now, again, this is not the reason why I think open source has grown so much, but I do think it has played a big role. Basically, what I mean is that if you're a user, right? And I'll get into an example in a second, but if you're a user, telling other people that you have an open source product in your, you know, that you use every day is just a lot cooler than saying that you have a basic private company that you use. Like I recently had a chat, this, this will probably sound fake, but I had a chat with a friend of mine and he brought up the fact that he was using some open source product. He brought it out of nowhere and I wasn't expecting him to say this because he's the least technical person that I know other than myself. I'm just a junior. But the fact that a non-technical person, this guy has nothing to do with coding, brought up the fact that a product he was using is open source, really tells you something about how other people perceive open source and open source companies. The common view is that this company is good because they're open source, because they're transparent, because they're not hiding anything, because they're not stealing your data. And you know, for the most part, that is enough to really start a movement. And on the other hand, right, this is not good. And I, I, don't, I hope that a lot of companies don't do this just for this fact. But what I see is a lot of open source companies leverage this goodwill with people being open source and use it as a marketing strategy to get customers. Again, this shouldn't be the only reason you go open source and you shouldn't, right? There should be other reasons like you want to self-host, you want to make things free, you want to make a better product, but it's just one of those big reasons. But yeah, these are just a few reasons why I think open source has grown so much. If you're asking me, I do think that this is the future and I really hope we see a world where all government code is open source, all code is open source. I really do think that for the most part, it's better if things are open because you know everything is all right and no one is doing some shady shit like closed AI. But that is just my opinion. Maybe it shouldn't happen. I don't know, but it's just a belief of mine. If you did enjoy the video, please like and subscribe. It would honestly really, really go a long way. Leave a comment, leave two kiss emojis, leave anything, just make it appropriate or inappropriate if you're like that. I'll leave my Twitter handle below too. I'm always on Twitter. So check me out on there if you're, you know, if you're on there as well. Happy coding and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.